Welcome back, circuit fans. Nenel is a done. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have possibly the last match for today. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. Pet Turtle versus Anir on Trojan Hills. Pet Turtle going for the Rover Factory and Anir going for spiders. Because why not have spiders? Spiders are good. So yeah, Pet Turtle is going to be going for a factory, which I'm not really convinced is entirely viable on this map. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just that because of the ramps on the map, it feels like vehicles aren't really the way you'd normally go. But at the same time, this is kind of a flattish map, and it is a bit of a larger map, so the speed does help. It's so fair enough. I can totally see where that's coming from. I can also see where this is going to be coming from, because that commander is a little bit too far away. The dart should be able to take out, or at least heavily damage some stuff. Scout a bit, damage a bit. At least be a slight pain in the butt. Forcing Anir to use their jump and, unfortunately, no follow-ups, but hey, still forces the jump out there, which must be annoying. Like, when I say annoying, I mean it's not really that strategically relevant, honestly. On the other hand, Pet Turtle, they have no workers, in fact. They have no builders at all. They've gone heavy on the fencer. I mean, they know that the spiders are there, so fencers are definitely a good choice. But they're also in a position where they don't have any real means of expansion. I mean, there's this. There's the commander, that's kind of it. Otherwise, nope. Nope, they got nothing. I mean, at the same time, they do have ways of threatening expansions and seeing what's going on and seeing that Anir is expanding very quickly and therefore is not going to be necessarily very well defended. Unfortunately, I think this is where we're going to see Pet Turtle stop paying attention to this one dart and that's where it's going to be lost. No, they are paying attention to the dart. Good. Because I hate to see the dart just die. That would have been a real shame. Pet Turtle also setting up over to the center of the map, but I don't feel like this is going to be especially effective. I mean, it's there, it does deal some damage to the fleas, but I don't see Anir caring about that. I mean, Anir wants to get the expansions. They want to take this northwest, they might want to take this eastern side as well. The center is a thing, but it's probably not going to be super relevant to Anir for now. I expect Anir will care about that later on, but not really right now. Same time, though, Anir does have a bit of a no-go zone here. And Pet Turtle, I don't know if they're going to worry. In fact, they might even decide... I was going to say they might decide to go for an attack, but no. Pet Turtle apparently playing it safe, using all of these fencers purely to hold on to the center. Not using them to try to take out anything up front, not trying to destroy any expansions, just holding the center. Which means Anir actually has a lot to work with over to the sides. Mostly with the Venom here, but the commander coming over here to this the plateau over to the western side of the map, and that is definitely going to be a bit of a problem, because that means Anir now has essentially an artillery positioning on Pet Turtle. And Pet Turtle doesn't really have a way of dealing with that. And also, that's an expansion right next to Pet Turtle's base. Pet Turtle could have taken that, but they haven't. So now Pet Turtle is going to be in a bit of an awkward position. At the same time, though, Pet Turtle could take this eastern plateau. It's far away from Anir's starting point as well, and... Well, Pet Turtle basically has center control, so it wouldn't be exactly difficult to hold on to. At the same time, though, Pet Turtle is expanding a bit more... Well, a bit more quickly, but without as much in the way of actual construction. Like, Dev, they haven't got anything assisting the factory like Anir does. Pet Turtle has just the factory. No caretakers, no constructors, or at least nothing helping out the factory. So, while Pet Turtle is a bit economically, it's not helping. On the other hand, Pet Turtle is in a great spot as far as military is concerned. I mean, these these fencers here are going to be a major problem if Anir is not ready to deal with them. And it doesn't look like Anir is ready to deal with them. They have some Hermits out, but the Hermits are out of position. The Redbacks are not going to help at all. I mean, maybe not at all. Actually, this is, this is one difficult thing for the Vehicle Factory, is that spiders could come over through here. While Pet Turtle's forces are stuck here. Which means that, theoretically, a red bat could come up from this little ravine and then hit everything up on the top. So it's not necessarily free. Like, yes, there is definitely a strong military force from Pet Turtle that is threatening Anir's base, but there's a lot of room Anir has to defend against this. At the same time, it almost looks, almost looks like Pet Turtle has decided to go in almost as a feint, putting Anir into a bit of a tricky spot, forcing them out, and that would lead to these fencers potentially being in a good position if they were positioned right, but unfortunately for them, they were not positioned properly to actually stop the Hermits from coming in. They would have been in way too awkward of a line. It's just 
kind of surprising Pet Turtle isn't going to at least set up further fr up front, though. I think they could still maybe take... No, the Hermits would be too strong. I, I can understand this. Because Fencers don't deal much damage. Like, 40 damage a pop, it's not going to be enough to get... It would take half 30 seconds to get rid of a single Hermit. Even for seven of them, it would still take long enough that the Hermits would be able to wipe out most of the force. Like, Anir definitely has the advantage in terms of military. And this is kind of why I'm surprised we saw Rovers, because how are you going to get, like, okay, the Fencers, you need to get rid of the Venom and Redback, but the Fencers aren't really in position for the Venom Redback. You're using them to hold on to the front. Scorchers would help a lot against the Hermits, but you don't have the Scorchers there because they're trying to be used to raid. I'm thinking, I mean, Ravager Ripper wouldn't be a bad idea, but we aren't seeing that much. All at the same time, ooh. At the same time, there is still a lot of fear. Anir is not confident they can take out the Fencers with their force, which, again, I'm kind of surprised. I think they could, but their confidence is lacking. Hermit on the other hand coming in, and there's the confidence. There's coming in, and now we're seeing exactly what I was talking about. These Fencers are not that strong. They are not going to be, th they're not going to be able to threaten the Hermits as well as I think Pet Turtle thought they could, or certainly as well as Anir thought they could. Like, Anir clearly under the impression that those fencers would be a problem, but no, that is not the case at all. The fencers are absolutely not a problem, not for the entire force of hermits that's coming in here. I mean, admittedly, Dart's coming in to try to help support, provide a little bit of slow damage. That will help, but it's not going to help enough. Those Venoms just stopping everything. The fencers are able to get rid of the Venoms in the process, but this is not the only army that Anir has. However, it is also, it is still kind of the only defense force Anir has, well, the Darts are able to get in here, deal a bit, of, a bit of damage, get some harassment in. More importantly, allow for the plateau to be taken out. That is the key thing. Pet Turtle able to grab this plateau that they should have taken earlier on in the game, but now they're able to potentially take back. Certainly fighting for it. Fencers are definitely in the high ground position. They have a good spot to fight from, but they're not going to fight with They're just straightforwardly trying to kill the Redback, allowing them to get completely creamed by all the Hermits. I, this is why you put these things on fight move, by the way. Like, this the fight move forced them to attack as they're going. Unless you want them to be in a very specific position. But otherwise, yeah, that was a mistake. Unfortunately, the fact that they were targeting the Redback meant that they could not fire on the Hermits as the Hermits were nearby. Because Fencers do not fire while moving. So, yeah, that... Wow, that might have cost Petrol the game. Because now we have Anir encroaching on Petrol's main base. We have... A slight economic advantage for Anir. Definitely a production advantage for Anir. They have plenty of construction help. Although, admittedly, Pet Turtle did get some caretakers up. But even then, Pet Turtle is still in a really awkward position right now. All this reclaim is inside of Anir's territory. So they can just take it as they please. The 650 metal worth of reclaim is not nothing. Same time, more fencers coming in here. But again, Hermits do beat fencers. Especially in these numbers. So... Again, Pet Turtle is still forced back, and they basically have nowhere really to expand other than maybe the eastern side of the map. Nowhere easily defended is the key thing. And now that those fencers are destroyed in the center of the map, there's not a whole lot to defend it. More fencers have come in, but in the meantime, Anir has just regrouped, rebuilt their forces, gotten some reclaim going, and is continuing to set up as quickly as they can. I mean, again, they also they do have 30, well, 40 build power coming in here, so excess shouldn't be a major concern. And while there are these fencers coming around the sides to try to deal some damage, Pet Turtle getting some success over to the center of the map, but over on the western side of the map, the Hermits are just systematically destroying all of these fencers with no real problems. Because again, Hermits just last long enough to be able to just wipe the floor with fencers. So the center of the map, yeah, there's a bit of progress, but these Hermits can waltz straight into Pet Turtle's base, and there's not much that Pet Turtle has set up to do against that. I mean, Pet Turtle could have Ravagers and Rippers, that would help get rid of the, these... Well, Ravagers just alone would get rid of the Hermits. Like, more HP, similar damage. The Hermits would not stand a chance, but unfortunately, that is not what's happening. Pet Turtle is entirely focused on Fencers. I'm guessing Pet Turtle is thinking they want to go for the Fencers because you go for Skirmishers against the Spiderbot Factory. Just as a rule, they don't have a whole lot of anti-Skirmishers, but Hermits don't care! Hermits have the HP to blast this, and I think Anir realized this, and that's why they went heavy on the Hermits in the first place, because Hermits do deal with the Skirmishers, as do Recluses. Like, Pet Turtle has an anti-Skirmisher army. That is what they're building. Uh, sorry, Anir has an anti-Skirmisher army. Pet Turtle is, has a Skirmisher army, so Pet Turtle is being directly countered. That's more importantly what's happening. Sorry, I got them mixed up. Either way, Anir is taking this game. Or at least, Anir is taking a lot of... 
a lot of the fight to Pet Turtle's front door. And Pet Turtle, while they are trying to harass in the back lines, and they have managed to deal a bit of damage, those fencers are stuck. Like, those fencers are stuck. They're done. They're dead. And a near... Okay, they lost a few mental extractors here and there, but really not all that much. Well, at the same time, though, Pet Turtle might actually be able to turn this harassment into something useful. I mean, I am saying, you know, Pet Turtle's taking a lot of threats over to the main base, but the fact that they're attacking all around the map has actually started to pay off. The fence is over to the northeast, or northwest, earlier we saw it wiped out a bunch of metal extractors. Northeast also wiping out metal extractors, but more importantly, Pet Turtle is making sure Anir can't attack the main base, because at this point, if Anir tries to attack the main base for Pet Turtle, Pet Turtle's got forces all around the map that's pushing Anir back. And while I don't think Pet Turtle can directly confront any of Anir's forces, the fact that Pet Turtle is forcing Anir to split their attention is still main making a very strong position for Pet Turtle, allowing them to expand quickly to the eastern side of the map, defend it fairly well, and make it that much harder for Anir to assault Pet Turtle's main base. And again, because Anir's kind of got their focus split, these fencers can actually start taking out units as they come. Because yeah, the fencer army can't get rid of the hermit army, but one or two hermits at a time, that is still something the fencers can get rid of. Of course, I still feel like Anir is going to be in a strong position if they can reclaim. If they can reclaim. And losing the commander would have been a problem if they had if that had happened. But they didn't lose the commander. They did lose the center. But at the same time, plenty of hermits coming in along the sides here. And that is going to be very likely the end of all these fencers. As the hermits just crest that hill. The fencers were already prepared. So given that, Pet Turtle definitely taking advantage of... Not radar coverage, actually, I guess... Line of sight? Yeah, line of sight. That Sparrow was right in a good position. So at least the fencers were able to get back, deal a bit of damage to the Hermits before the Hermits became a problem. Regardless, Anir able to wipe out those fencers, but they did lose a lot of metal extractors in the process, forced to rebuild them, but that's maybe not a big deal. Again, the biggest thing to me is the fact that Anir was forced to split their attention. Unfortunately, the problem for me is that Petrol didn't have a force that could actually wipe out these Hermits. Like, defensers weren't bad for harassment, but Rippers would have... Rippers Ravagers would have done just as good of a job. And they would have been able to deal with the Hermits. Which the fencers cannot do. Not to mention, all of this reclaim is in Anir's territory, and the, it's being taken. That's like 1,600 metal in Anir's territory, and the Weavers are right there. So that's where the issue lies, is that Anir really doesn't have anything that's stopping them. I mean, they've taken a lot of damage, sure, but nothing is actually getting in their way. Scorches are up, should be able to help get rid of the Hermits. But the center is starting to fall. Same time, north side of the map, we do have a couple of fences coming in here, but they are not going to last against those Hermits. So the question to me is, what happens to these Scorchers? I mean, the Hermits are going to get destroyed. The Reclaim is now inside of Petrodal's base. Petrodal can set some Scorchers over to the north side of the map, then... And Nier figures that's, that's exactly what's going to happen, and Petrodal takes the game! Thanks to some really clever... Although, admittedly, well, I doubted it, but still, some clever fencer harassment all around the map. They did manage, Petro did manage to take the northeast side of the map as a result. But again, it was just splitting Anir's forces and putting Anir into a really awkward position that allowed Pet Turtle to very efficiently use their army. Despite the fact that fencers were not a great unit choice, considering their opponent's composition, Pet Turtle just decided, you know what, I'm just going to avoid fighting altogether. And Anir couldn't really do much about that because the Hermits are actually kind of slow. So, a pretty clever play from Pet Turtle and a good demonstration of what you can do with the Rover Factory. If you're playing it right, if you're positioning yourself properly and attacking on enough fronts that your opponent is essentially scrambling with units that cannot move quickly. So, very nice game there from Pet Turtle. Well, Pet Turtle and Anir both. But yeah, I think that's going to be it, though. Oh, Petrodal was up at 20. Era. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. People are pointing out that Petrodal was up by 20. Okay, no, no, hang on, hang on. Okay. Fine step. Petrodal was up by income near the end of the game. But looking at the graph here, the income was almost even. It only became Pet Turtle's advantage once Pet Turtle sent the fencers over to the north and the, the northeast, northwest, or northwest, northeast. Once that happened, that's when the economic advantage was actually taken by Petrodal. Prior to that, the economy was going back and forth, and it was basically even the entire time. The biggest spread, other than that, was right here, which it's like 15 metal per second very briefly. And I believe... No, it's not reclaim-based. So yeah, 15 metal per second was a very brief spread. 
And I think that was the first assault with the fencers going around to try to take out the Northwest expansion. But yeah, that's it. Pro like, the big metal advantage was because of the fencers attacking the Northeast and Northwest. That, from there, Petrol was up at 20 metal per second income. And yeah, that definitely sealed the game. But prior to that, it was like, there was, it was jockeying for position until he got the economic advantage. And then once that happened, yeah, Pet Turtle was able to turn that into the right units in the right place to get rid of everything Anir had, and Anir realized it. But Anir had a very strong economy prior to that happening. But anyway, that is, I think, going to be it for me for now, since unfortunately there was no tournament. I'm not sure if there is tournaments. I think I might just switch back to the earlier schedule, because... Like there were supposed to be weekly tournaments from Ultra Godzilla, but apparently Ultra Godzilla didn't actually show up last week. They didn't show up today either, but not a lot of people signed up. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but it looks like that tournament series is not really happening. So I'm just... I'm just going to assume it's not going to happen and switch the schedule back to Saturday. So yeah, a bit of an awkward timing, but I expect we'll be going back to Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific. So, for now, though, this is going to be it. So, thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone. Or, good morning. Good day. Good day. It's actually, it's 8 in the morning for me. So, yeah. Have a good day, everyone.